they're actually going to be upset because their relationship with stuff is flawed and they're going to take it out on and you. And it's amazing that people think, if I had a billion dollars, then I would do this. Yeah. No, no, you get the billion dollars because, because you do that you now yeah. and who you are, that becomes the byproduct. And that's personal, that's the self-worth over yep. the net worth. Well, well, let's even frame this. The majority of the population, if I use this word, I promise you they think it's a bad word. Expense. Mm. They view expense as negative. It'll even have a, a filling in their stomach, if I say it. Expense. Mm. What good is money without expense? It's the only way oh, it money is, is utilized. Is, is, so if we view how we utilize money as an, as an expense or negative, by the way, your income, someone else's expense. My income, someone else's expense. So think about the push and pull. If we're taught to lower our expenses, we're lowering other people's ability to create value, which slows everything. I mean, dude, you know, this is fun to talk to you about because you get it. I get it because that was actually how I got one of my clients to finally get his wife on board to hire a house cleaner because she didn't want to. And I said, you got to use the frame of, do you care about this community? Well, here's what I did. Do you care about creating jobs? Because every time you clean your house, you're taking somebody's job away. Well, you brought up, you brought up uh, like just who you spend your time with. So when we had our first kid, it like was it was a little tough because I felt like, Breck was a higher priority than me. And I was like, hey, we're going to be still together when Breck leaves the house. Yeah. Right? And I was like, we should get you a nanny for at least part time so you could have some free time. She's like, well, it'll make me a bad mom. And I was like, and we should do, like, and I was thinking about all the support. So I got three really wealthy friends. But I said, what would it take for us to get together? And Carrie could interview the girls. I can interview you guys. I just want to know what are your best practices in marriage? You guys have all been married longer. Your kids are more grown up. Like, what were the mistakes you made? What would you do differently? And I interviewed them. She interviewed the girls. Oh, yeah. And then we came back together. And by the end, we had hired this nanny that was so phenomenal. I mean, literally just loved our kids. She was so great when, when she moved. She's bawling in the car. Carrie's crying in the house. It was like a, you know, but Amber was fantastic. And, and what it did is it gave Carrie freedom to like pursue some of her own interests and and to like have some friends because a lot of times people get so isolated mm -hmm. during those times. But there was like this old paradigm of to be a good mom, she had to always be around yeah. instead of take care of herself and make herself the greatest asset and, and be able to show up with more That's energy. So because right? sometimes we believe like somehow quantity matters, but it's quality that matters, not quantity. Quantity is scarcity, yeah. quality is abundance. That's interesting. You're right. A lot of time is not high valued. It's the constraint of time of like the. If you and I were just watching TV all night last night instead yeah. of talking, like. Not valuable. But if we spent a whole week together, we just. Yeah. We're on Insta the whole time. Yeah. What if we didn't put mics in front of our face? Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So. So, yeah, it's all about the numbers. Like if if you were to summarize, like because you know that like what money is, how it's an energy, how you view it. Um, yet most people believe that their self-worth and their net worth are the same thing. Mm. That's, that's an interesting one because I actually think that your self-worth has to precede the net worth every time. Like right off the bat. If Talk about your, your view of self-discipline. I mean... And, and how, like, if we make these personal commitments internally, mm -hmm. but if we don't actually do that, how it that's betrays us. That's how we erode us. at it. So, yeah. so like a lot of people, they see the way I communicate and operate and they say like, Dan, you, you have a lot of self-confidence. And I go, but what you need to understand is the confidence doesn't come from some like made up place. The confidence comes from keeping the commitments that I make myself in private, not the ones I make publicly because those are easier to commit to, right? Especially if you make them to other people. Like most people would rather break their own commitments. Yeah, I made the mistake of telling Garrett White I was going to do a triathlon and now I have to do a stupid you guy to do a triathlon because of somebody right? else yeah I just I, I think that's an interesting concept that your self-worth precedes your net worth every time like it, it's it's impossible for it to be the other way like how 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 come is it hard for people to part with money to invest in themselves when it's so easy to part with their money to invest in a fund Dude, like that's that's just a strange Dude, they just phenomenon. Don't, they don't understand that like the nor narrative they're telling themselves. Even hiring a financial manager that doesn't know shit, like they're they're most I don't know if you know the staff. I don't I don't 
I don't mean to judge people, but I mean, what do I got to go on? It's like, I look at you, I look at your life. I know you're not even listening to yourself because I can look at your appearance. So you're not even taking care of yourself. So you don't like make good decisions for your own life. And then you're going to manage my money. And I look at your life and I'm like, I don't even think you manage your money. And, and at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff, it's like the fees and the structure. Like most people have no idea that that person the end of the day, if the market tanks, it happened to my dad, happened to my, my wife's parents, like they, they're just like, deal with it. And yeah. you thought you had a buddy for 27 years. You thought you had right, a person that had your it's back. It's some expensive golf. It's an expensive yeah, dinner. Yeah, it turns out they didn't have your back. They didn't even control your back. They weren't even involved in what was happening behind your back. They were just a person doing this. And, and then when it goes south, they're like, sorry, you knew the risk. It's like, well, and this is this is my entire belief system that I really hope that the world can listen to and hear because it will change their life. If we invest money in something we don't understand and get a return, that's called gambling. There it's not investing. Yep. If you don't grow yourself and your knowledge while you grow your money, the energy gets out of whack. You won't be a proper steward, and you'll find a way to lose it one way or the other. Hence why people that win the lottery, lottery all that. athletes. Yeah, because but, but who else is teaching? Like, I don't know, because yeah. I remember a co uh, I think it was my mentor. He said to me, he said, no, it was Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn had this great line. He said, you should hope if somebody gave you a million dollars, you become a millionaire really quick. And I just love that frame, because he's like... Just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you're a millionaire. A millionaire knows how to make the million dollars become they become valuable enough to attract the money. Right, like the skill sets that you have right now, if you decided to start at zero for the hell of it, the skill sets don't go away, the relationships don't go away. So these are the two more precious forms of capital, mental and relationship capital. Yep. And if we think that financial capital is what's valuable and we circumvent mental and relationship capital, it is increasingly difficult to recreate or sustain because we don't have the, they don't the proper know, knowledge they don't know of the people. This right? is I think it was Andy Frisella said this once, too, because he struggled for like eight years. He created uh, First Form and 75 Hard and, you know, and, you know, he's he, I mean, he's crazy wealthy, right? Like super wealthy, probably a billionaire on his way. And he talks about it often like I'm glad it took me a while to figure this out because at each stage I became capable of receiving right. the wealth stewardship yeah like he's like now I have my family office if I would have got this money before I had the infrastructure I would have I somebody would have took advantage of me yep. so I, I would have made a yes. decision that was uninformed because I, I almost needed to grow with my wealth that's why you see to, like old wealth continues to be really intelligent and new wealth becomes yeah. very volatile yeah, because they haven't understood how to create the infrastructure to 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 be a steward. Yeah, so have, I, you, have you listened to the the Jay Z song "Story of OJ"? Well, probably I just didn't well, know he talks that. about like how he went and bought this this car that depreciated. He goes where he could have bought a two million dollar property in Dumbo that was now worth eight point two million dollars. He goes, I'm feeling pretty Dumbo, you know. Yeah, just joking about it. He's like, hey, I'm trying to give you this education for ninety nine a million dollar education for ninety nine cents. Like using his lyrics to, to talk try to about, educate financial right, yeah. like to, to talk about stewardship and all this kind of stuff yeah. because. Really, in the world of rap, it's all about, hey, here's the chains, here's the cars, here's the all this kind of stuff, which is demonstrating this false Hollywood life. And he's saying, hey, like, he became a billionaire because he did something with well, it. Well, think about this. I, I actually think, you know, when I look at objectively, people that have a poor mindset around money, when they get money, they look at what they can buy. People that have a mediocre mindset, they look at money as a way to increase the ability to borrow credit score, loans, bank accounts, whatever, like bigger house, whatever. But, you know, th that's the middle level. And then the highest level, they get extra money. They go, what can I invest it in? They literally like, I mean, wealthy people, you give them an extra ten million dollars and they don't go, oh, what kind of car or house can I buy? They go, where can I deploy this to make a million dollars a year on this money? Yep. Like people don't get if, you know, one of my favorite frames to to offer people, I did it on the hike on Tuesday, this kid, Jesse, you know, because he, he just, his energy was low. And I said, Jesse, if I put $10 million in your bank account, how would you feel? He's like, well, I don't even know how to, I wouldn't even know what that would feel like. And I go, let's pretend. He's like, and he says to me, I feel okay about that. I was like, 
I like grabbed him and I shook him. I go, dude, what needs to be true for you? Like, dude, 10 million mediocre returns, 800 grand a year, dude, like divided by 12. That's per month that you got to spend. And it's still there. And it'll pay that forever. Like you're telling me you'd feel pretty good. He's like, you know what he said to me? He goes, if that was true, I'd be worried that I wasn't living a life that my girls would look up and be proud of because I'd be scared. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, at, when I when I spoke at SAS Academy, I took people to this exercise where I had them pretend they had an extra ten dollars per month every month, no taxes. Then I went to a hundred. Yeah, I love that. And then I went I to a thousand. That. And yeah. it was all about getting people to go. What point? Stop thinking about yourself. Yeah. What point about, does it become about other people? See, because a billion dollars sounds like a lot of money if you're thinking about what you could buy. It sounds insignificant if you think about the impact you can make. Yeah. And that is so freeing because I, you know, I start my book with what would you do with a billion dollars? It's the first line in Money Unmasked because when I thought of that in my 20s, I felt small because I didn't know. I was like, oh, you know, and I've had people critique, oh, you could buy everyone a house. Well, what good is that going to do? Yeah. There's taxes to those houses. There's maintenance. Oh, dude, there's that's, all this that's kind of a stuff. big, like, again, like people that are, have a poor mind mentality, they're like, oh, I'd buy my friends new cars like no you wouldn't because you know you're gonna have to deal with the they're gonna be pissed off it breaks down who's gonna pay for it who's it's, gonna pay their insurance look at every lottery winner yeah. and read about it right like literally you think you're gonna do that and then if you did it they're actually gonna be upset because their relationship with stuff is flawed and they're gonna and, take it out on and you and it's amazing that people think if i had a billion dollars then i would do this yeah no, no, you get the billion dollars because, because you do that you now yeah. and who you are, that becomes the byproduct. And that's personal that's the self-worth over yep. the net worth. It so. comes the self-worth has to come first. That's yeah, a and then brain. and then when you have the self-worth, you can get your macros right, get veins in your arms and six pack abs <laughs> and, 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 and and protein bros. You know what I'm saying? Well, There's thanks, levels man. to the game. Nah, dude, it's an honor, <laughs> thanks man. I for, appreciate uh, thanks this. for doing this. It was fun. Super cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.